Hello everybody! Today's video is all about the Xiaomi Note 2 and how to set up a Xiaomi Note 2 when you already have an existing phone. You know the feeling when you have a brand new phone? When it's your very very first smartphone ever and you spend days tinkering with it, customizing it, you were wowed like all these things that you used to use to have your laptop to be able to use now, you could use your phone with it. But after your third upgrade or whatever, you just want to be able to set it up real fast. You want to just stop messing with things for days just to make it feel like truly yours and you just want it to be set up just like your old phone so you can just start using it and sell your old phone. The target phone is the Note 2 and the source phone is the Redmi 2. My father already has an existing Xiaomi Redmi 2 phone which is this one and it works fine except he went to Hong Kong recently and he saw the Xiaomi Redmi 2 phone it was pretty cheap there, cheaper than here in the Philippines, so he got it. I should start with showing you the interface of the Xiaomi Redmi Note 2. I don't like how it looks because it's it looks like an iPhone ripoff and they don't have the app drawer. For those people who are just tuning in and have never seen an Android phone ever, your home screen has all your icons, widgets, whatnot, and if you click apps, that's where it shows you all the apps you have. But if you go back to your home screen, you only have the shortcuts that you put there of the most frequently used stuff. And for all the other apps, it's hidden inside the app drawers. First up, I'd like to show you a better view of the Xiaomi Note 2 interface to unlock. So it looks like this weird iPhone knockoff with no app drawer. But the first thing I do usually is I sync it with the Google account accounts and Google and after you've synced it and actually without you doing anything from this phone from your source phone your target phone already have most important thing your freaking phone book your contacts right because it's a phone that's what you want it for and most of the usual apps that you already have it's also going to be downloaded for you well actually not all phones do that sorry I think I did that with this Motorola with two generations of Motorola's and when he moved to the second one they just remembered which one he had but where is the Play Store here? Hold on. And it's gone. Look, this is the the Redmi Note 2. It doesn't have the Play Store. This App Store, that's the Xiaomi App Store, uses your Xiaomi account, doesn't use your Google account. It's not here. As you could see, it's not here. It's not on the second page too, and it's not on the last page too, and that's it. The, th the weirdest thing is when my father had it to me a day ago, the Play Store was here. It wasn't my imagination. You know what? If I, had, I, if I, had, I hadn't used this phone yet, I would have thought maybe I imagined it, but I didn't. Because using it, I had already pre-installed the stuff that he had on his source phone to the target phone, which is this one. Basically, Google Keep, Google Calendar, Evernote, Nova Launcher. I was talking about using that launcher, right? Because I don't like this weird fake iPhone look. Google Photos, Call Log, Super Beam, Swiftkey, all these things came from the Google Play Store. So I, you know, it couldn't have been installed here by elves, but it's gone now. This triangular thing, I was, I thought it was the Play Store because I've always recognized the triangle, but apparently it's not. I don't know what happened. The last thing I did with it was it's upgraded to MIUI 7. It came with Android 5 already when I first got it, but it didn't come with MIUI 7. It came with MIUI 6, which is what this other phone had. But now it's very strange. I installed MIUI 7 and the Play Store disappeared. So I'm going to have to pause this video to really look for it. I found a Google Play Store APK using the browser. I'm going to try installing it, see if it works. I did it set out to create a Lord of the Rings length epic, but hey, these weird things happen. I thought I might as well document it for the people to whom this has happened. If I'm doing, if I'm making this video, might as well, right? So let me click install. I'm clicking, I'm installing it from the APK I downloaded, mind you. It is there, but my connection is not okay. Huh. I'm just going to figure out why it cannot connect online. Then I'll be right back. This is such bullshit. The APK, the one I installed, it doesn't actually go online, so we're going to uninstall that. I found it here in their app store. You're probably thinking, why did you look there in the first place? Well, I did. And I, the first result, it says Google Pinyin input method in Chinese. 
And the second result says search from by two, which is their homegrown search engine. The third was then search for something else, which I guess is another homegrown search engine. But I thought it meant search for random Google stuff information because it's a search engine. Why didn't they just freaking freaking list it in their app store anyway? So I searched there and this is, it says Google installer and then it says one click install. So let us try. So now it's stuck at 82%. I'm just gonna figure this out, so I'm gonna turn off the camera again. I restarted the phone. Finally, the Play Store is working. So I already have most of the apps that I actually wanna be using on this phone. I only have a few apps left from the source phone. Let's cross our fingers that it actually works. Running. Basically, what I'm doing is I'm installing what I have on the source phone into the into the um, destination phone. I basically have most of it already because I did it the other night before Play Store disappeared. But I realize I still have a bunch that I haven't installed yet. So now we have moved to the source phone. I'm gonna go to the Nova Launcher settings. Click Nova settings. It says backup and import settings. So you back up how your home screen looks. So you click OK. And it says backup created. I stored it to my external SD card. I wanted to have the call logs and his messages. SMS backup and restore. Backup his SMS. Yes. So it's backing up the messages. Next is we're going to look for call logs, back up and restore. I'm going to back up his call logs. It's backing up the calls. I'm going to grab the three backup files I did. Uh, the Nova Launcher settings backup file, the SMS backup and restore file, and this call logs backup and restore file. I'm going to transfer it to this phone, the destination phone, and I'm going to restore it there. You could opt to send it through bluetooth or you could send it through super beam i don't know if you guys know super beam but i love it it pro you probably won't see much of a difference using super beam to send files now versus using bluetooth because these files are so tiny but if you're sending bigger files like videos it's really it's really fast it transfers files using wi-fi <laughs> That's why they brung V, he's still hungry. To spit something thick on the mic like a lungy. Mind your daughter, she online for the water. To get lucky like when she found a quarter, kinda sorta. Remember me, dark clean, Tendra Emery board. He only came to save the game like a memory card. Ooh, shoot. Hey guys, so what I'm doing now is I'm transferring the contents of the memory card, of that memory card, into my computer while I'm waiting for it to be done. If you want if a lot of apps to reinstall, you don't actually have to be clicking manually in the Play Store in your phone. First, you look for the app you want. Okay, let's say Evernote. When you click it, it's actually going to let you pick from a drop down all the other devices, all the Android devices that's under your account that doesn't have that app yet. So once you click install, it's actually just going to go to that device by magic. Well, you have to turn that, the internet of that phone or that tablet uh, on first, and then it's going to go there. So it's very easy to just hunt for the apps you want. And if you say, hey, I can't remember what other apps I have on my previous device, and for some reason your previous device got lost or it won't turn on anymore, if you click on my apps, it's actually going to just show you what apps you have installed. And let's say I have a Xiaomi Mi Pad tablet here. I click it. It's going to say, hey, what are the things you have installed there? And I have a bunch of, for example, you want to replicate what apps you have in some device into device device number one into device number two. Well, you can see what which device has which apps. And let's say I, I click Messenger, Facebook Messenger, drop down, and it's going to go. You click this, and it's going to go to that phone. And then you click Install. That's it. So... 
the point is I wanted to show you guys when you're setting up a new phone you don't want to be if you don't want to be using your thumbs to type one by one you could just search for all the apps you want and then just queue it up and if you can't remember what apps you have just click my apps and then here in the drop down you'll remember which particular app you have installed in which particular device this also actually works for your phone. Your phone also ha your phone's Play Store also has my apps, and it will also say what things you've already downloaded before. So it'll jog your memory. I already put the memory card back into my destination phone, which is the Xiaomi Note 2. Let's see if my backups will get restored. So I'm in the file manager. I this is my restoration folder. Let me click Nova Backup. I have to select the type of file. Let's just say Documents. It's going to ask you which app you want to use to open this file. So I'll be like, yeah, I want to use it. Use Nova Launcher to open, restore backup, blah, blah, blah. It actually now has, without me rearranging the icons. So as you can see, Google Calendar is here. It says set up. It's blank here. So let's click it. Create widget. Yes. Oh, there you go. So it just jumped in. Most of it is here. I have to click setup for the Google Keep widget. There you go, it just showed up. The Google Keep widget is what he has here. It's a very great notepad. The layout of the new phone looks the same as the old one now. So the home screen has the clock, then this, the same icons at the bottom, the same, the same, the same. You're wondering why does it have to be ex exactly the same? It doesn't. It's just that I'm setting it up for my father who's not really re into customizing his phones. He just wants it to look the same as the previous one. So he could just start getting... So he, just, he could just pick up where he left off and start using it. And one great thing about Nova Launcher is it helps you pick up where you left off, you know, with the home screen settings and stuff without having to one by one manually move all these like little icons around. So one good thing with the Nova Launcher is that you could actually set it to lock the home screen after you're done with everything. Without locking the home screen, if I long press it, I could move it around. But if you're done with it, well, you don't want to you don't want it to move around. Lock desktop. So you go back to the home screen, you try to move it around, and it's locked. Now, if you do want to move it around, you press it longer. It's gonna say unlock it like this. But I'm gonna cancel. One other thing what uh, is uh, that I appreciate with Nova is it has these little icons that you want to expand the notification shade. You pull it down, right? But if you just don't want to pull it, if you just want to press a button to do that, it does that without having to pull it, pull it down. Now, what, another thing that I like is that it has the recent apps icon. So I click it to show the recently opened apps. Now you're thinking, why doesn't the doesn't this phone itself have that? It does. But it shows it as the old school hamburger icon, like the three horizontal lines. That's traditionally the menu icon, right? And since I'm giving this to my father, I want it to look all consistent with what he's been used to using. Otherwise, it's just ingrains really bad habits if it's not consistent, you know? And I don't know why Xiaomi opted to still use this ancient style icon for it, where they could just use the, you know, the square or the two squares piled on top of each other. I think it's only the, in the most recent iteration of Android that they just made it a single square. But in any case, it's not this freaking hamburger menu. Yeah, when you press it, it's, it's the recent apps. But I always train him to click this for recent apps. And there you go. And this is the home. This is back. I also have it like this here. It, it shows, it stays there persistently in the dock. The recent app thing. The reason why... I'm trying to ingrain these habits is because he also has a tablet. This tablet is the Asus Nexus 9. And being a he's been using Nexus products before he actually got these Xiaomi phones or before he even got like Android phones. And he has the very first generation Nexus 7, which actually ingrained good habits in proper you know, before all these like weird phone companies started putting their own touches. The reason I'm showing you this is that for his tablet, this has this the recent apps square. I'm going to show you how to restore the call log. Basically, you go to File Explorer, you go to your SD card folder, restore. Click close, let's find out. 
There you go. All his other call logs from the past are here, which is very handy. Especially in our business, you just call a lot of people. You want to remember who the hell you called. Some of the numbers have not even been saved. Now let's try restoring the SMS. Click this. Restored using the SMS uh, app. Would you like to, what would you like? Yes, you want to restore. Okay, now it's restoring a bunch of messages. Yeah. I'ma pull up when she called me. Baby, you know I don't pull out when we love it. Touching, kissing. All the messages from the source phone, they're now here. I don't like it that these phone manufacturers don't even follow the same freaking icon. It's not like about being a nerd or whatever. It's If it's not consistent, you know, people are just gonna mess, get messed up. For example, like normal people who don't spend all their life buying new phones or reading about phones would ask me like, you know, why is this button changing? Why? Why? You know, I have no idea. Why, why is it? Why is it not the... If it's supposed to be that square, just use the freaking square. The last thing I want to show you guys is if you want to transfer your files from your source phone to your destination phone but you don't want to use super beam for some reason and neither do you want to use bluetooth or you don't have a card reader to plug into your computer to do that or a cable you could use usb on the go not all phones support it but a lot do I should show you the end first it has a micro usb end so the first phone it's gonna show up yeah, there it's gonna show up touch two. These are the things that are in this USB thumb drive. Isn't that cool? So this is your phone. This is the things in your memory card. You could transfer these things into this USB thumb drive and then move this to this or some other device. So the last step here when I've already finally transferred all the data that's pertinent from this phone to this phone, either using the memory card Actually, if I wanted to, I could just pop out this memory card to this phone without even having to transfer. But he changed to a bigger memory card there. This phone only had a 2 gig external. So that's why I had to do the thing, you know, either using my computer or transferring. But yeah, one handy th thing with the having a phone with a external card slot is you could just pop this card into your new phone. Uh, but we're not doing that because we already transferred the files we need anyway. What we're doing is we're basically just removing the SIM card. And we're putting it in here. The, the Note, the Xiaomi Note 2 SIM slots. Well, once it turns on, now it has the carrier symbols there. That means the SIM card is active and Everything's good. It's just like you transfer the old phone to a new one, except it's a faster phone with bigger space. Hope you guys found this at least a little helpful. Thanks for watching.